fortunebuilders.tv. Hello everyone, J.D. Sajan in front of the camera once again and welcome to another exciting educational episode of fortunebuilders.tv where we bring the real estate and small business education directly to you every week. That's right, you can count on it. I, I'm going to be in front of the camera with um, hopefully a uh, surprise guest coming up but today it's just me and uh, my main man Dave behind the camera and uh, actually Dave do I look okay today am I give me the thumbs up okay good you know I a funny thing actually I had my hair long for a while and my wife wanted me to cut it and so now I'm in this in-between stage and I was looking in the mirror this morning and I felt like my hair looked like um, Ralph Macchio from the Karate Kid days and and I got real self-conscious so when you watch this show can you please give me a comment let me know if I if I do look like an 80s Ralph Macchio because if I, if I do I'm gonna shave it immediately true story actually um, where was I going with that I don't know but I got off track a little bit I want to remind everyone besides telling me if I look like Ralph Macchio from Karate Kid um, also put in comments about the show and let us know what you want to learn about because this education is for you go to the suggest a show segment and and let us know what you want to learn more about and I guarantee you we'll, we'll review it and you may get a show out of it. Today we're going to talk about foundations. Um, foundations of houses specifically for those of you that are watching this and maybe aren't in real estate. One of the number one, probably the number one fear that a lot of investors come to me and talk about is they don't know what to do with foundations. And so actually Noah in our office was uh, on our Monday call was saying you know you should do a show on foundations because I get that asked by students a lot. And so I said, let's do it because I get that asked too. They're afraid of foundations. They don't know how to deal with them. So we're going to break that down. Really, we're going to do it in a number of shows because it's a bigger topic that I can, that I can do in one show. Um, so let's talk first and foremost about like what are some typical foundations. Um, one of the most common foundations you're going to see is what's called a slab on grade. And that's just a regular concrete slab on, on the ground basically for, to put it in layman's terms. The other very typical foundation you'll see is what's called post and pier and that's a raised foundation. Those are really your two most common types of foundations. Now there are every flavor of foundation in between custom built homes that cantilever out over a cliff and doing different things like that but I want to break it down to the two most common types you're going to see. Um, raised post and pier foundation and then slab on grade. The other kind you're going to see um, is going to be like a basement, a house that has a basement and you're actually underneath the foundation. That's a different type in and of itself. So today I'm going to talk about just slab on grade. Okay, and I'm going to talk about some things that go into foundation repair and what to look for. Now, first and foremost, a slab on grade when you break it down is just is just concrete. Now that's a very simple way of looking at it. There's a lot more that goes into building a foundation than just pouring concrete. But at the end of the day, a, a slab on grade is just concrete. So if you look at who can repair that? Who's qualified to repair that? Well, anyone that specializes in concrete can potentially uh, repair the foundation. Now, there's a, a host of other things that go into repairing it right and doing it in a way that not only is uh, the right fix for the property, but also allows you to have some documentation when you go to sell the house that you fixed it. So let's talk about, um, let's start from the beginning and let's talk about what needs to happen first. Well, there's a reason that the foundation is failing or has failed and it was caused by something so you need to we need to as the investor address that and typically speaking the most common cause of foundation problems is going to be water okay and managing the water on the property that's a very common scenario that affects slab on grade and so you need to look at what's going on with the water how is it being managed is it being managed at all and determine that first so drainage is going to be a big big component of what to look at. Does the house have gutters on it? Um, if it doesn't, it does the slope of the soil around the foundation go towards the house? So water sits in pools by the foundation because what happens when you've got a, you know, like a slab sitting like this on the ground and you've got a house on top of it, when water sits around the outside of the foundation, what it does is it causes soils to settle more and consequently the foundation to potentially crack. All right, that makes sense when you think about it. So you got to look at that and, and you have to address that. You have to make sure you correct that so that the problem doesn't happen again once you fix the foundation. So, you know, another uh, very common cause of foundation problems with slab on grade is the actual, when they built the house, the kind of fill that they use, meaning the kind of dirt that they used to, um, to 
fill the, the site to, before they did uh, and poured the foundation. And what you're going to see commonly is there'll be, an, there'll be areas of town that are sort of hot spots where there's a traditionally bad fill or bad dirt that there'll be a number of different houses and sometimes you know whole communities where the foundations have problems. It's, a, it's good to note that because when you find those areas, those can be sometimes spots to stay away from, meaning if the area is so bad that the houses have major, major uh, foundation problems, major settling that, that isn't caused necessarily by water. It's all about the dirt. Well, you know, the problem is you, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna knock the house down, destroy the foundation, and re, uh, refill the, the, la- the site with dirt. That's gonna be cost prohibitive, right? So you gotta, you gotta know that. But another very common cause foundation, of foundation problems is the kind of dirt, the fill we call it, that they use when they built the, built the house. And you'll see that in certain sections, certain uh, subdivisions of properties. Now, the other things with slab on grade that you're going to see are cracks, sometimes minor cracks and sometimes major cracks. Now, every city and county is a little bit different in terms of what they're going to allow you to do when you repair slab on grade, but what typically happens up into a certain size crack, you can actually do what's called epoxy injection. And what that is is basically injecting an epoxy type material into the crack and um, done in a certain manner that allows you to, that will kind of hold the foundation where it's at, right? Now that's assuming the crack is, is of a certain size, meaning it needs to be pretty small, and that it's not in an area that is gonna, that uh, epoxy injection can fail very quickly. Um, taking one step back, these are all things that you wanna look at getting uh, advice from a structural engineer. So to shift gears a little bit, let's talk about the key players that need to be involved on your team. Because we as investors, we don't want to be foundation experts. I know a lot about foundations, but I'm certainly not an expert. And I know more than most. So I know enough, and you should know enough, to know that you need to have a team of people to be able to get opinions from. Now, who are those people? Well, first and foremost, a contractor that specializes in foundation repair. And typically, it's going to be someone that has a good knowledge of concrete. So you need to find that person because foundation companies that specialize and only do foundation, there's a wide range of pricing. When I say wide range, I've gotten quotes, and we'll, we'll break that down in the deal or no deal segment here in a moment, but I've gotten quotes from $20,000 to $100,000 for almost the same scope of work. That's an $80,000 difference. There's your profit right there, okay? So you need to know how to find the right person. And I'm actually gonna talk about that in a subsequent show. But let's talk about who are our key players um, because this show could get really long and I wanna keep it just dedicated to slab on grade. So our key players are a contractor who can correct the problem. We also, and as important, need to have an engineer, a structural engineer that can evaluate that foundation. And what they do is is they create a report. And it's actually, this is a, a phase one geotechnical structural evaluation of the residence. Now, this is what we do here in California and it's what an engineer prepares and it's basically a summary of the property. They visit the property, they check the site, they look at um, existing conditions, they look at the soil makeup quickly, uh, they look at drainage, they give you an overall evaluation of what's going on on site and then specifically what's going on with the foundation. And then from that, from that report, the engineer and your contractor and you will devise a plan for repairs. Now there's always um, there's always a range of repairs that you can do with slab on grades meaning you can under improve and you can certainly over improve. Um, There's things called pipe pipe piles that you drive into the ground to stabilize the soil and um, sometimes that's overkill for a repair and you don't need to do that. Uh, Sometimes it's not and then so that's really where a good engineer and contractor can help you navigate through and you want to be you want to repair enough so that the problem is corrected safely and up to code and that you have a good quality product to sell. Uh, but you don't want to overspend money that doesn't need to be spent to correct the problem. And you know, usually, and, and I've, I said it earlier, the big problem is water, believe it or not. And you have, and you, once you correct that, that's, that's usually, that'll be a big function, a big portion of that repair job that you do, you'll do. It just depends on how much damage did that cause to the foundation. You know, do you have to actually remove sections of the foundation? And these are things that you'll go over with your, with your engineer and your contractor, all right? So they do a, um, a report, like I showed you, and then you devise a plan, a level of work that you want to do on the, pro- on the foundation. And then what happens is the contractor does the work and it has to be inspected by sometimes the city and more, honestly, more importantly, your structural engineer, because that's the person that's going to give you a, a stamp 
of approval like he did right here on on the work being done right so what happens is an engineer is going to want to see certain things being done when you're repairing the foundation. They're going to want to see did you do the epoxy, the epoxy injection right. If you had to remove a section of the foundation and then uh, basically scissor in, uh, scissor cut in new rebar to tie a broken portion to an existing portion, did you do that right with the right kind of rebar? Did you inject the rebar, epoxy inject the rebar in properly and bind it all together? you know, well, that, they're going to want to see that so they can, they can say that it was done up to the specifications. So it's very important that you enlist a good engineer is really what I'm getting at here because the truth is they're going to be the ones that, that help you devise the plan and then supervise the plan and then as important in this whole process are going to give you a letter of completion when you're done. Now why is that letter of completion important when you're done? There's a lot of reasons. When a buyer goes to buy the property and their agent pulls up the previous listing, maybe the bank owned listing goes bank owned and it says major foundation problems, what do you think they're going to want to see and ask? Same things you'd want to see and ask, right? Was it fixed right? Was it fixed at all? Did you just slap some, uh, some concrete over the crack and call it a day? You know, you need to have something to show that buyer to make him or her feel comfortable. And then take it one step further. Do you think a lender might ask the same question? Right? They get their appraisal, they see the previous listing out foundation problems, the lender questions, was it repaired properly? A bank's not going to lend a new buyer money on a house that has foundation problems. So you need to be able to not only document it, show the buyer so that they're comfortable even writing an offer, but the lender even funding the deal. These are all things you got to think 20 steps down the road as an investor because it's not just enough to fix the problem, you got to document it, you got to have a professional engineer sign off on it so that these are things that allow you to sell the property when you're done. You know, and there's so much more that goes into other types of foundations that I'll break down on, on following shows, but with the slab on grade, it's important really with any kind of foundation that you doc, with every kind of foundation that you document it right. So our key players are our contractor, usually a specialist in concrete with slab on grade, a structural engineer. And uh, those are, those are going to be your, your main components of getting the foundation repaired right, okay? And then as much city involvement as you need to get it uh, signed off on properly.